They're trying to find ways around the Second Amendment to be able to confiscate your guns. And even if they have some kind of grandfather clause, everybody that has an AR-15 right now gets to keep them, that still puts them on the path to where the AR-15 will eventually be like a machine gun, and so nobody will be able to actually have one. Now, that would take a lot longer because of how many AR-15s there are, but the point is that's what it would eventually do. It would make it to where you were not able to own an AR-15. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. And he actually gets into a debate back and forth with Senator Ted Cruz where he starts arguing about this and the definition and the importance of it. So let's go ahead and watch that. Mr. Chipman, a minute ago, uh, Senator Whitehouse asked you if any of your views on guns are out of step with the majority of the American people. Um, they are, the AR-15 is one of, if not the most popular rifle in America. It's not a machine gun. It's a rifle. Uh, your public position is that you want to ban AR-15s. Is that correct? Senator, uh, thank you for the question, and thank you for our visit yesterday and offering me a Dr. Pepper. It made me reminisce about my time in Central Texas. But now to your uh, question. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, with Pepper's respect to the AR-15, on. Uh, I support uh, a, a ban as, um, as has been presented um, in uh, a Senate bill uh, and supported by the President. Um, the AR-15 is a gun I was issued on ATF's SWAT team. And it's a particularly lethal weapon, um, and regulating really? it as other particularly lethal weapons um, I have advocated for. Um, as ATF director, if I'm confirmed, I would simply enforce the laws on the books. And right now, um, there is no such uh, ban on those guns. So you want to ban the most popular rifle in America. And the point that Tr Ched Cruz is trying to drive home is that his beliefs are wildly out of step with the average American citizen. Now, a whole lot of, you can do polls all day and night that show that most people do want assault weapons banned. But again, it depends on how you define assault weapon. Because most people in their head, they think of like a Tommy gun from the Godfather movies. But those are already illegal. You can't, can't have those. Those have been banned for a really long time. And so if that's what they're thinking about, then they're not actually, their actual beliefs do not reflect what the poll suggests that they do. And to point to this, you can actually see these are the top five selling semi-automatic rifles. So you can see there, number one, the Smith & Wesson M&P Sport 2. Number two, the Ruger PC Carbine. Number three, that one's obvious, the Colt AR-15. The Sig Sawyer Tread at number four. And the Springfield Armory St. Victor at number five. So again, the, these are not like the best. These are the best selling. And this is according to Gun Genius. Uh, these are the best selling guns in America. Let's look at how many of the semi-automatic rifles are AR-15s. Oh, just four out of the five. And number one, three, four, and five. And by the way, even though number three, the Ruger PC Carbine is not included in that, guess what caliber it is? Nine millimeter, which is larger then 22, and it has a detachable magazine. So according to the definition, the only definition that he did give, that one would be banned as well. All five of the top-selling rifles in America <laughs> would be banned under this director if he had his way about it, if he actually has a law that allows him to do what he wants to when it comes to gun control. And he said he publicly advocates for getting rid of assault weapons in that way. And so he would just get rid of all the popular rifles that people buy. Now, to his second point, remember he gave a rationale there. And this has nothing to do with the definition. He said, the reason that I would be against specifically the AR-15, and I think specifically they should be banned, is because they are particularly lethal. I don't know where he's getting that, and I also don't know what particularly lethal means. Because if you get shot... With the Derringer, it can be lethal. It's not as powerful or as accurate as an AR-15 for sure, but all guns are made to be lethal. That's what guns are for. They're, they're killing devices. 
and you don't want to use them. I mean, they're supposed to be ideally used only for self-defense. But at the end of the day, like, that's what they are. All guns are made to be lethal. They're made to be as lethal as possible. Now, some are less lethal for the advantage of portability, the ability to conceal. You know, there's other considerations that go into making a gun. But the point is, every single one of them has the capacity to kill. And the gun manufacturers do exactly what they're supposed to do because they are killing devices. They make those guns as efficient as, at killing as possible. That is not a reason to ban them, especially when you consider the purpose of the Second Amendment is to stop any kind of government tyranny. Well, you can't do that with guns that don't kill people. If you want a gun that doesn't kill people, you get a stun gun. You don't get a gun gun. And so the, the rationale is just absurd because that would completely defeat the purpose of the Second Amendment to only have guns that aren't particularly lethal. And again, it's something vague that nobody can actually pin down. But let's ask, ask the question anyway. Is the AR-15 particularly lethal? Bass Pro put this together, and, and remember that Bass Pro primarily caters not to people that are buying weapons for self-defense, but why buying weapons for hunting. Now, I understand the Second Amendment has nothing to do with hunting. I'm not suggesting that it does. What I am saying is that this particular graphic was one that was designed specifically to assist hunters in picking the caliber, the round, that they need for bringing down big game. And as you can imagine, the deadlier ammo is the larger one. They tend to be the ones that make the biggest holes and make the biggest exit wounds. And this is specifically for knocking out the biggest game and doing the most damage that you can with the round that you have. So the average person that probably doesn't know anything about guns would probably look at this and go, oh, the AR-15, that's like the deadliest gun out there. So it must be that, that really big, scary one there at the end. It must be that super big caliber there at the end that's there for hunting black bears or elk or something. No, no, actually, actually, that's not the case. In fact, let's let's go ahead and highlight which round is the one that the AR-15 uses. Oh, uh, oh, it's it's that one. It's the two two three, which is actually one of the smaller ones. It it actually fits into the varmint round of all of the calibers. And so the idea that this thing is as the perspective ATF director mentioned, particularly lethal, that's simply not based in reality. Yes, it is lethal. It is a gun that can kill a person because that's the purpose of all guns. But the idea that this thing is somehow uniquely lethal and it's one of the deadliest guns on earth, it's not even close to one of the deadlier guns. And when you're talking about lethality, the round is significantly more important than the gun. So this idea that somehow the AR-15 is just uniquely deadly, uniquely lethal, or as he said, particularly lethal, that's, I'm sorry, that just doesn't reflect reality. This is not a particularly lethal weapon. I remember there was a congressperson a while back, a state congressperson, that actually said that if you shot something with an AR-15 for hunting, that it, you wouldn't even be able to eat it because it would tear up all the meat. I was just sitting there like, no, no, this person has no idea what they're talking about. Now, for comparison's sake, let's just go ahead and look at a comparison of what an AR-15 does versus what a 12-gauge shotgun does, the most popular shotgun in America. So on the, your left, you'll see the holes that 223 ammo, which the AR-15 uses, the kind that they make. So you'll see there's different grains, different uh, kinds of 223 ammo, but they're all 223 ammo, the kind that the AR-15 uses. And then over there on the right, by the way, this is both on drywall, so we're using the same substance. It's not that, you know, one was shooting something squishy and one was shooting something hard. This is the same substance. This is both drywall. Over there on the right, you see that great big hole there? That's a 12-gauge shotgun, the most popular shotgun gauge in America. Yet nobody's talking about banning shotguns because it's politically unpopular. Now, they will come for those eventually, make no mistake, but the point is, this is all for politics. The AR-15 is not a uniquely lethal weapon. You, you can see right there the damage that an AR-15 does versus what a shotgun would do. 
there's simply no comparison. And that doesn't mean that an AR-15 is not a good whip weapon to kill somebody with, because, I mean, yeah, it is. It's an AR-15. It's, it's designed to do that. But the idea that it is somehow particularly lethal compared to all the other firearms out there that he's not suggesting that we ban is, frankly, just incorrect. For somebody that's supposed to know an awful lot about guns, he doesn't seem to be real savvy on that. Or, and I think that this is the more likely scenario, he actually does know what he's talking about. He's just trying to mislead people to suit his agenda. Let's look at this last exchange between him and Cruz. So when you say it didn't go far enough, you mean that you don't just want to ban the manufacturer of those rifles. You don't just want to make it illegal to sell those rifles, but you want to actively have government go after the people who currently possess firearms. And if they don't register and submit to all of the onerous restrictions of the National Firearms Act, presumably confiscate their weapons. Senator, um, what I've said publicly is that uh, as an advocate, uh, I prefer a system where the AR-15 um, and other assault weapons are regulated under the National Farms Act. What you heard there is he's saying that, well, I'm just for a system where the AR-15 would be regulated under the National Firearms Act. To the person that has no idea what that means, that sounds pretty reasonable and benign, doesn't it? Like, I'm just saying that they should be regulated. That's all I'm saying. The people that would look at that and be like, oh, that's not such a big deal. They have no idea what the National Firearms Act actually is. The National Firearms Act is the piece of law that originally outlawed things like machine guns and sawed-off shotguns. I think the sawed-off shotgun was actually added later. But the point is, that's what he's saying. Okay, well, shotguns are basically illegal in this country now. You can't get them. The only way you can get a machine gun is if you are literally a millionaire. I mean, it costs thousands upon thousands of dollars. And not only that, if you are one of these people that has the special licenses to own a machine gun, you cannot transfer it. You cannot let somebody else, you can't even let another person, a member of your own family, shoot that gun unless they have a license to. I mean, the regulation that is on these things is just insane. And you cannot own one unless you're a millionaire. And the other thing is, they're not allowed to make those, the gun manufacturers, for any kind of commercial use. So they can't make a consumer model of those firearms, which means that all the ones that, they, that are available are insanely expensive because they're super rare and they're very old. And the older a gun gets, the less safe it gets. And so what this would do is it would effectively put the AR-15 on the path to becoming exactly like the machine gun if this were to take place. And this is what he's suggesting that we do. He's saying this is his personal belief. Now, we're, we're moving past what you would define as assault rifle and moving to, no, this is something that I advocate for, that it be regulated under this law. If you do that, he is talking about banning AR-15s. So when Beto O'Rourke, Bob Francis, as he's more commonly known, when he stood up on the stage and said, HS, we're coming for your guns, he meant it. This is what the Obama this is what the Obama Biden administration was doing back then. It's what Biden is continuing to do now. They're trying to find ways around the Second Amendment to be able to confiscate your guns. And even if they have some kind of grandfather clause, everybody that has an AR-15 right now gets to keep them that still puts them on the path to where the AR-15 will eventually be like a machine gun, and so nobody will be able to actually have one. Now, that would take a lot longer because of how many AR-15s there are, but the point is that's what it would eventually do. It would make it to where you were not able to own an AR-15. And the sad thing is Trump actually kind of put a precedent forward with this because he did exactly the same thing with bump stocks. He just said, uh, through executive order, by the way, not through legislation, not by actually passing any laws. He just was basically like, uh, you know what? I think they should be classified as machine guns. Totally. Um, and that's what happened. That's how he, with the stroke of his pen, decided, yeah, bump stocks are illegal now. Now, here's the thing. I understand the rationale behind banning bump stocks if you're going to ban machine guns. Like, if you, if you ban machine guns, you have to ban the thing that makes a regular gun basically a machine gun, even though it doesn't do that perfectly. But anyway, I understand the rationale, but whether or not I even agree with it, the way that he did it was wrong. 
And it gave, ironically, the left ammo to do things exactly like this to conservatives in the future. And that that is on Trump. Uh, he's not the originator of the idea, probably. They probably would have done something similar to this anyway. But the point is, Trump actually set a dangerous precedent by doing that. And, and you know, I know that a lot of you really wish that he was president right now, and I do too, but that is not a good legacy for him to have when it came to firearms. But what this all should emphasize is that while Biden is no moderate, even if he were a moderate, all of the people he's putting into place are radicals. And even if he were personally moderate, it wouldn't matter because he's putting a bunch of radicals in place that are carrying out radical agendas. And so even if he personally were just an old-timey Democrat, his administration would still be wildly to the left. To the point that they're saying, yeah, let's just get rid of the most popular firearms in America and confiscate them from people. And no apologies for it. I mean, that, that's who Biden's people are. To convince you to like this video and subscribe to my channel, I'm about to do some political impersonations. First up, Bernie Sanders. It is immoral that in this country, the top 1% of YouTubers get all the likes and subscriptions. John Kerry. Please remember to ring the notification bell. President Joe Biden. If you like the show, call the TV Guide and tell them. You know, the thing. Kamala Harris. Batman would want you to like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>